everyone hear me okay? <laughs> um, it's lovely to be here. Um, I've been coming to Poets and Players on and off since I moved up north about five years ago. Um, and I always feel like I'm at the peak of my civilised self when I'm here. It's like live poetry, live music in a lovely venue on a Saturday afternoon. It's, you can't get better than that. Um, and this morning I found myself polishing my shoes, which I never do. <laughs> so I hope you can all admire. They actually still look very scruffy. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a delight to be here. And thank you for that lovely music. Um, so I'm going to read a few poems from my pamphlet, Angola America, which was out um, last year. The poems in Angola America explore a certain aspect of the prison system in the United States of America. Um, the pamphlet takes its name from um, the name of a prison, Louisiana State Penitentiary, which is the USA's largest maximum security prison. It's known as Angola after the former slave plantation that was on its territory. Um, it's also known as the farm and a lot of the big prisons in the American South were either built on or modelled on um, former slave plantations. Um, so some of the poems in this try and kind of grapple with um, the legacies of racism and whiteness that continue to create such worlds. Um, I started writing to a man who's on death row at Angola Prison three years ago. And so the poems have come out of that um, friendship. So I'm going to start with... Correspondence, another year. The grey static of the dashboard ignites into a ringtone, ignites into a woman's voice, pale polite as a white picket fence in the still of morning. Hello, this is a free call from an incarcerated individual at Louisiana State Penitentiary. This call is not private and may be monitored. You may start the conversation now. And the line ignites into song as you sing to me, happy birthday. And because birth is death in reverse, I imagine blowing a candle out backwards, sucking the orange talons into the prison of my lungs, the wax congealing up the wick, the match lying down in its box, the rush of our bodies diminishing inside the bodies of our mothers. Search. In the beginning, the guard's gloved hands pat you down. Searching for weapons, his touch is weaponized. The muted duty of his movements smooth along each of your arms. Soon the guard's touch is the only touch from another. And you think of your mother after bath time, the harbour of her chest against yours, the rough love of her toweling you dry, reaching into all the nooks and crannies, no cabbages behind the ears, she says. And yes, I guess searching the body is another way of saying the body is a trove of treasure and your touch a torch. Um, so my friend has been on death row since 2008 um, and he's done all sorts of um, things whilst he's been there, all sorts of different courses. One of those um, was a first aid course, um, so he learned to administer first aid and do CPR whilst being on death row. Body Bloom Your brother on death row is learning to blow 
his breath into the mouth of a mannequin. The ongoing bellows of his lungs, gifting life into its artificial windpipe. His palms enact the non-existent heart by pressing onto its rubber chest. As if your brother could resuscitate this lifelike dummy that will never know what it is like to live, nor live to die. Meanwhile, the valves of your brother's heart open and close like a series <coughs> of trapdoors. Meanwhile, leaves somewhere are composing oxygen from his carbon dioxide. Meanwhile, imprisoned brothers are held together by chlorophyll and its preference for blue light. So, Angola prison is huge. There's over 6,000 inmates, over 1,000 staff. Many of the staff live on site within the prison grounds. Um, and it continues to be a profitable 18,000 acre farm um, with the prisoners set to work on the fields for little or no wage. One of the things, so it's a kind of society within a society, and one of the things that goes on at Angola is a rodeo in um, true American South fashion. And it's known as the wildest show in the South. Um, and inmates taking the most risks win cash and it's the longest running prison rodeo in the US. Anti-Ode to Angola Rodeo. Men dressed as miniature zebras bolt from their cages into the dust bowl of the prison coliseum, into the ritual of cowboy and steer, Thunder of whoop and cheer as three lifers herd together, throwing their ropes into the air to lasso the body tornado of a bull. Muscles of shoulders swelling as water brought to a rolling boil. One lifer clings onto a bronco, kicks in the rowels of his spurs, making the horse buck and toss him like a tiddlywink to the mud. The guts and glory of convict poker. To pluck a chip from between the horns of a charging bull. For to be gored is to be both honour and disgrace. To be both man and beast, broken boned and returned to their cages. So as Poets and Players is such a wonderful celebration of poetry and music, I thought I'd do perhaps my most song-like poem in this um, pamphlet, Asylum. Dr. John, with his throat of rusty iron, got locked in you, sang a song for you, a 17-minute anthem driven by the beat of collapsing chains. Kevin Gates, with a tear on his face, got locked in you, sang a song for you. The tear remained unchanged. Lil Boosie, with his red eyes rolling back inside his head, got locked in you, sang a song for you. Led Belly, with the asylum of his accordion and howl, got locked in you, sang a song for you. Of how the ball weevil looked for a home in the holes of the cotton. James Booker got locked in you, sang a song for you. His fingers singed the keys of the piano like flames in dry grass. One of the things that I'm going to prison um, that they have is a museum, and you can imagine all sorts of grotesque and horrifying exhibits. 
um, in that museum, one of which is an electric chair which used to tour the parishes of Louisiana before finding its home at the prison. Exhibit electric chair. She still holds the grain of the tree that made her and the name they gave her. Gruesome Gertie, sitting there in the museum like a chair sits, unassumingly, except she is ribbed with leather at the legs and wrists. Which southern tree was she? A swamp cypress with her root buttress in the slow mirror of the bayou? Back when her flowing flowed with sap? Back when she spoke only pollen and symbols of leaves to the wind? Now her oval knots have blinked open her varnish, as if all the tension of living were translated in lignin, as if her many dead left her like the memory of empty nests. The final poem I'm going to read um, <coughs> I, don't, I wouldn't say it's positive, but perhaps it's a bit more of a rallying call <laughs> um, to end on. Um, thank you so much for listening, I'm really looking forward to hearing Nick and Katrina. Death Row Hex Let the lords of Big Pharma dam up the rivers of paralytic and potassium, so the glass vials become trinkets of air. Let the nib of the needle blunt into a stub and scud across the surface of skin, finding hindrance. If all else fails, let every wall of every vein buckle and blow before the venom reaches the stubborn muscle of your heart. Let the chair reject its add-ons of anodes and wires. And if it decides to keep them, let the electric grid short circuit from too much rain. Let the gurney, with its refrain of screeching wheels, return to our chapels of care. Let the Mississippi, hugging the prison, peel back to reveal the fat lip of mud. Let the sun in the yard beat harder than any past. Let there be a bus waiting to carry you home.